Hi, and welcome to the lecture for the informative presentation assignment guide. As with all these assignment guide lectures, I highly encourage you to go ahead and take a look at the written assignment guide available on Blackboard. But with that, over the next couple of minutes, what I'm going to briefly do is walk you through the informative presentation, talk about the requirements, and the things that you ultimately need to do to be successful inside this assignment. With that being said, let's get it done. All right, brief overview. This presentation should be between 15 and 20 minutes. If you're going over 20 minutes, I might let you fumble for a little bit, but I'm ultimately going to cut you off. And if that means people have not spoken or finished spoken, they will not get to in those parts of the presentations you will do poorly on. So practice, 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 and make sure that you fall into the time limits, keeping in mind that you should have relatively equally spaced speeches of three to four minutes between group members. The presentation itself should have at least six scholarly sources. That being said, six scholarly sources will probably score you a C. So if you're looking for, say, an A, you want to aim for 15 to 20 good sources to get that grade. You're going to be putting an outline together, and the outline should have APA parenthetical citations for those sources, and you should also be saying those sources out loud to your audience as they work their way through. Um, in addition to all that research, you're also going to have four to eight visual aids, and we'll talk about what those look like towards the end of this presentation. All right, the basics. You're writing an outline. This is an outline, not a manuscript, meaning that you're writing full sentences that cover the main ideas of your presentation. Not word, not a single word that covers the main idea, but a full sentence. You're going to upload this outline to Blackboard, and I highly encourage you to use the template. It'll keep you in the APA format and keep you out of trouble. And again, make sure you're citing your sources on that outline as well as out loud as you give this presentation. The basic structure of an informative presentation adheres to the Aristotelian idea of how informative presentations look, which involve an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. The body tends to be broken up into three or more main points, and basically you will have as many main points as you have group members. All right, so let's start with the first one there, and that was the introduction. A, an Effective introduction has these five parts, an attention getter, a credibility statement, an audience adaptation, a thesis statement, and a preview of main points. Let's talk about each of these things one at a time. All right, so the first thing that you want to do inside your presentation is have an attention getter. And I do mean this is the first thing that you want to do. When you get up in the room, you should not say, hi, we're group two, we're going to be giving you a presentation. You have failed to gain attention at that point. Instead, what you want to do is something creative to get the audience interested in what you want to say what you're about to say over the rest of the presentation. So you have to bridge into that. Some things that work really well is a quick story. Just make sure that it's short. And that means it's really short, like less than 30 seconds. Uh, you might want to say a famous quotation that is related to your topic. You can make a startling statement that talks about a kind of drastic statistic related to what you're talking about. You might briefly give the background on a current event so people understand the context of your presentation. And in this place alone, you might might feel it necessary to bring in a personal experience. Now, there is an advanced maneuver called the story sandwich, and I'll tell you about that when we get down to the conclusion. Without further ado, let's do the rest of the introduction. After you've done your attention getter, yeah, you can do that audience adaptation. Say who you are, try to craft your message a little bit to your audience. I mean, this is something you generally want to do out throughout the entire presentation, but you might want to say, like, hey, so how many of you have ever experienced X, Y, Z? You know, something that makes your audience feel indebted and connected to what you're talking to them about. From there, briefly in a single sentence, tell your audience why you should be listened to for the next 15 to 20 minutes. So you need a credibility statement. Here, basically establish your qualifications, um, talk about any special knowledge you might have, more realistically about the extensive research that you and your groupmates have done, um, possibly personal experience, and this will establish goodwill and show your moral ca character inside of here. So something as simple as, over the last few weeks, my teammates and I have done extensive research on this topic. That's a good credibility statement. All right. Next up is the thesis statement, by far one of the most important statements of the presentation. The thesis statement should clearly and concisely communicate 
your purpose. Do not draw draw on uh, for a long period of time as to what your purpose is. Say it in a single simple sentence. Today we are here to inform you about this thing, right? It does not need to be more than that. Clear, concise, memorable, and you might even do a big arm wave to go ahead and uh, make it stand out and grab people's attention. Not to be confused with the thesis statement is the preview of main points, where the thesis statement is what you're going to do, the preview of main points is how you're going to do that, and may take a sentence or two or three to get it done. And here, just tell us what you're gonna talk about, right? Tell us how many main points, what they are, and perhaps who is going to speak on those. At this point, you're ready to transition into the body of your pres presentation. Right? So transition statements are a really clever thing that you can do to help glue all of this stuff together. So, for example, as you finish the introduction, you might see something along the lines as, all right, now that I have finished telling you what we're going to do, next up is Tammy, who is going to talk to you a little bit about our first main point. And when Tammy finishes, Tammy might say, like, all right, now we understand the history of this issue. Let's pass the floor over to Timmy. And Timmy is going to talk to you a little bit about current uses. All right, get the idea. Moving on. So the main ideas become the main points of your presentation. Once you have chosen a topic, you choose the main and most important aspects, and these are your main points. Typically, you should have as many main points as you have group members, minus one. So if you're a team of five, four main points is probably what you're looking for. And you should spend about equal time on each of those things. Again, remember your time limits. You can only talk for 15 to 20 minutes, so you need to make sure that you keep things simple. All right, during the body of your presentation, you want to have several sources that you want to reference. When I'm talking about sources, I'm talking about high quality peer reviewed research. This includes things like peer reviewed journal articles, books written by subject experts, and perhaps government sites that give you some good statistics. Now, while you have to have somewhere in the range of more than six, if you're aiming for an A, you want 15 to 20, and that's where that one source per minute recommendation comes in. Always, always, always cite the source first. So I should never hear you say like, oh, and by the way, I found this information on dmv.gov. Very, very bad. One, you didn't do it beforehand, so you didn't get any credibility, and you cited a URL. Don't cite URLs. Just tell us that you're citing a website. So, for example, you might say, according to the Department of Motor Vehicles website, you have to be 18 years old to have a full license in the state of California. Um, never, ever, ever give a statistic without a source. Always cite those things beforehand. All right, that leads us to the conclusion of the presentation. In the conclusion, there are three simple things that you need to do. Reassert and reinforce the, reinforce the thesis, review your main points, and close your presentation effectively. So let's walk through those. Now, when you tie back to the thesis, the reason you do this is to kind of bring things together in a nice, neat package. Start off with a break light statement. This might be something along the lines of to summarize or to bring things to a close or as we end our presentation or if you're really uncreative, in conclusion, this lets your audience know that you're about to wrap up. From there, refer back to the thesis, and I recommend using similar wording. So if your thesis statement was, hi, today we are here to inform you about XYZ, your tie back to the thesis might be, today we informed you about XYZ. Again, the similar wording uh, kind of creates a sense of cohesiveness to the presentation and, once again, lets your audience know that you're about to wrap up. Go ahead and claim those goals accomplished. It kind of drives me crazy when I see individuals say, like, well, maybe, hopefully, if you were awake, you learned something about our topic. No, you did good. Tell your audience that you did good. All right, from there, you want to review your main points, and this is very similar to that preview that you did in the introduction. Go ahead and restate those main points. Tell us what we are and explain why you achieved that goal of the thesis statement 
through those main points. Last but not least is to go ahead and close effectively. You want to create a stylized ending, very similar to the attention getter. You know, the more artistic and effective, probably the better you're going to be. Make sure this part's practiced and polished because it's going to be good and try to leave the audience interested. And you can do a lot of things here. You can include quotations, you can tell other stories, more statistics and whatnot. But my favorite thing to do is what we call the story sandwich. So say for example, you were giving a persuasive presentation on how we should better support the Butte County Humane Society. And so you came out, before you said anything, you said, say, you put a picture on the screen of a small, fluffy, orange tabby kitten. And you say, my friends, before you is a kitten named Penelope. Penelope the kitten is a homeless kitten that was picked up by the Butte County Humane Society shortly before this presentation began. Unfortunately, due to recent cuts in funding, if Penelope is not adopted in the next 15 to 20 minutes, she will have to be euthanized. That leads us to our presentation today on why we need to better support Butte County Humane Society, blah, 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 get through your presentation, break light thesis, all that good summing up, and then... Having left your audience on a cliffhanger, you then return in the conclusion to that story. Well, minutes ago, while you were listening to this presentation, I received a text. Right as they had pulled the needle out and began to euthanize the kitten, a family walked in and a doctor and Penelope the kitten survived. Not all kittens will suffer the same fate, though, so we must do good things. Uh, so you get the idea. Add some closure to the story. Story sandwich. Kind of fun and uh, tends to be good for the kittens. All right, let's briefly talk about visual aids. The visual aids in this presentation are, may not be what you're expecting. In fact, the biggest thing is they should not look like the visual aids in a lecture that you're watching right now online. This is a presentation, not a book. I don't want to see very much text at all inside your presentations. What I want you to do instead is use visual imagery such as charts and graphs and full screen images to enhance your presentation, right? And I'll give you a couple of examples of those in a minute. Um, you can use short video clips if they're less than 15 seconds. More than that tends to be a distraction. And in general, the best test of a visual aid is, is this distracting or is it enhancing? And if it's distracting, ditch that thing if it's enhancing, go ahead and stick with it. Um, in general, for a 15-20 minute presentation, less than four minutes of slides. So the way that it should work is that you should put a visual aid up on the screen, show it, explain it, and then put it away. So let's look at a couple of examples. All right, so say that I was talking about charts and statistics and whatnot, and I wanted to show you this chart. I pull it up on the screen, I would explain it, I would tell you to look at the axis and see how it's similar to the bars and the graph and blah, 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 blah. Get the idea, good, explained it in a short period of time, and turned it off. Tr trick that works really well is insert blank black slides in between your images. That way you can click next slide and the screen will go blank. It'll look like it's off, but alas, when you press the next arrow again, your next visual aid comes up and you can go ahead and use that. Once again, the idea here is to explain the visual aid, make sense of what we're looking at, and then turn it off. Do not leave visual aids up the entire time because that is distracting. If you do that during your presentation, your grade on the visual aid will suffer heavily. So make sure that you put it up, explain it, and then put it away. All right, so hopefully you get the idea on that. Last but not least, I want to go ahead and do a shout out to the annotated bibliography. In addition to creating an outline that has a title page, a body, a references page, you have to have an annotated bibliography. So here's the difference. The reference page is every single source in APA format that you referenced inside your presentation. So all those oral citations, these are the references that hook up to them. The annotated bibliography, however, is the 10 best sources that you used in your presentation annotated. So what you should do is create a separate document, read those 10 best sources, write a paragraph summarizing them, and then put the reference, the, the annotation, 
And we go ahead and list those in alphabetical orders as well, and then paste them in to the last page of the outline under the appendix. If you leave out the reference page and only have an annotated bibliography, you're going to lose points. If you forget to do the annotated bibliography, you're going to lose points. Remember, you have to have all of those things. If you're struggling with this, I put some links and some examples up on our Blackboard page. And as always, please feel free to contact me. All right, well, that wraps up our lecture. As always, if you have questions, please hit me, uh, look me up at any of the available channels that are um, accessible to you. Thanks and have a great day.